Hello everybody, good morning. This is Tom from Weekly Gospel Reflection. So today's message is going to be about watch all your words. They can be forgiven, but never forgotten. So today's message is about that. Hopefully you'll enjoy. Today's message, we're going to start out with Proverbs 12, 18. There is one whose rash words are like a sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. How many of you out there maybe say something to someone and you uh, realize that once you said it, maybe you shouldn't have said it, and when you said it, you say to yourself, oh man, uh, maybe I should apologize. I didn't mean to say that. And it may not be that minute, that, that day. It could be the next day or the day after. A lot of times, that's what we have to do. We have to be very, very, very careful what we say. Because it does matter. Because some people can take what you say and take it fine and be okay with it. But there's others that can have the same word you say to. You could be getting on someone. And then it just uh, it bothers them so bad that it affects their life. It affects them how they live. So a lot of times that's what we have to do. We have to take the time. We have to remember that who we're talking to may be, in other words, talk to the person who they are. What I mean is if it's an emotional person, a strong person, I mean, you pretty well know who you're talking to. But a lot of times don't say anything that you're going to regret, basically. Our word is like they will always remember those words that you say. They will always remember those words. If you look at Proverbs 10, verse 19, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. It's hard to restrain your lips. God is someone that you can talk to and you can trust Him. And that's basically what I'm trying to say today. If you take the time and pray to the Heavenly Father before you say harsh words to someone. A lot of times what happened with me when I was in my younger years, I was a manager, I was promoted manager early uh, because of my abilities at that particular time in that particular arena, in that particular world. I was over quite a few people into the supermarkets. I was uh, in charge of uh, many things. One of them was cashiers. And one of the cashiers came up short $100. And she had been short a few times. $100 back in the 70s was a lot of money. So at that particular time, I, I could not restrain my words. And I was not restraining my words very well in, you know, 1978, 79, 80, 81, 82. There was a point in my life that I was happy, but I wasn't happy. I was working all the time. In other words, I would cuss. And, you know, it, it was just a, a bad part of my life. But... I remember saying these words to lady, and she started crying. I need this for my food, for my children. Well, you don't steal, you work. And I'm explaining to her, you don't do that. And I'm, I'm getting louder and louder. And that was not me. That was not me. That was not me that was talking to that lady. She cried. She left the store, fired, no job, three children, husband unemployed. And as she's getting in the car... And she's backing out because of her this the situation. Did I cause situation? No. I mean, she's the one who took the money. But I could have caused her more pain and agony by yelling at her. She gets in an accident. She gets hurt. She, uh, truck rams her. And I said to myself, could I have been better? And yes, I realized I could have been better in my words. I didn't have to get down on her. I didn't have to get on her. I, I did not live in her life. And that was the problem. I'm not living in her life. And I started seeing how her life was. Eventually, what happened, she got out of the hospital. We took care of her bills. I, I, the store paid her bills at the hospital. She had no obligation there. I did get her another job, not as cashier. I got her a job at the electrical company. I did call in a favor. And I explained the situation, explained the reason why and all of the above to the person. They said, we will give her a secretarial job. 
And she ended up being grateful for that. And not only that, she excelled very well. So years down the road, she not only excelled, she became a manager herself. But we all have to be careful. I did have an attitude back in those days. So what, what happens is people make decisions on their own because of whatever particular situation that they're in at that moment. If you're in a bad situation, your car broke down, your tooth's hurting, and things are happening, and you have piles of money that is sitting there, thousands of dollars, what do you do? Sometimes it's easy to grab 20 and slip it in your pocket as gas for the day. And in those days, we didn't count the registers down, so it was more of a situation of uh, you know hit or miss. So we started counting register and found out a lot of people were actually stealing. And what happens is, is when you're the Heavenly Father, you find yourself in a situation like that. Pray to the Heavenly Father to help you get through that. Because temptations are hard. Temptations are there. Temptations is there for me to even cuss to this day. The temptation is there to me say bad words. And I have to say to the Heavenly Father, please help me not say any bad words. Help me not be the type of person, a bull in a china cabinet, that will say, okay, this is what I really need to say. And so I have to calm down. The Heavenly Father has me calm down and relax and say, okay, this is what you need to do. And so I have through the years. Because sometimes we, we fail to have this feeling of despair and grief and ever thinking about words that I said, and I said it, I shouldn't have said this at all. We need to create good habits. Good habits, health, healthy minds. A good Christian, help being a good Christian. And how do we do that? We, we start with a good attitude. We start no matter what. Do you ever you met someone that could have been had uh, someone passing or sick or whatever, and you would never know it because the person itself would never let you know in his heart? That is a person that is praying that has probably used God in their life and says, okay, you help me get me through this particular situation, this uh, speech I have to give, whatever. Nobody knows I just lost my wife. Nobody knows that I've got cancer. Nobody knows this, that, and other. Because the Heavenly Father will guide you through anything. He will help you through anything. The other day I prayed to the Heavenly Father, help me through this situation. Not only did He help me through the situation, I gained more by, by asking thy Heavenly Father. Good nutrition, good, good health, good attitude. Educate yourselves. What we need. Reading the Bible can help you. By help educate yourself. Read a verse a day or two verses a day or a chapter a day. A simple thing. What I always do, believe it or not, is I sit and say, Okay, Lord, what do you want me to read today? Some days I already know what I'm going to read. But the Heavenly Father guides my thoughts and I read. Then I so well, that's exactly what I was talking, talking about yesterday or day before yesterday. Create good habits. If we create good habits, bad habits will leave. It takes three weeks to create a bad habit. Three weeks for it to leave. If we create good thoughts in our mind, God will help you always. I want to thank everybody for always watching our videos. And I want to thank everybody for always coming on our channel. God bless and thank you so much. God is with you always.